Sim. How's it going, Milady Master? Okay, uh, it's going good. So yesterday you, you just got that out of it easy like that. Yes, it was okay. the biggest news of so lady history. Fucking amazing, bro. You know, I was super excited to do the audit here, but, but you know, I'm still gonna do it, but we're probably gonna fail hard. The good thing is now you'll have the as you're gonna have the audit, we're gonna be able to compare, you know, what result with whatever happened uh, on the audit. I'm very afraid that they find some critical bug and I'm still going to be screwed, man. <laughs> nah, but that's okay. That's okay. Ah, uh, that's okay. Um, I mean, you know, I was thinking that with the Solidity Lab, oh. at least it's easy to test, you know, because, well, you can further, you know, the, the, the limits for everything, you know. Every file is, a, is like on its own, right? It's like not 10 files interacting with 10 other files in Squid. Yeah, yeah. Hope, I mean, maybe I think it's going to be nice. It's going to be a nice challenge for us, you know, at least for me to learn something because this cannot be complicated, right? This is so easy, right? So we just like multiplying bytes. We're not really doing any math, you know, yeah. uh, mostly copying some algorithm like you told me yes. yesterday, you know, maybe, uh. maybe except for a bit of the fixed math, like fixed point math library. That's all. Oh, wait, wait, let me, let me share my screen. Yeah, let's, let's, let's start. Let me. Entire screen. Uh, my, my computer is quite a old computer. So if I lag out, um, please, oh. please, uh, if somehow my voice breaks, just tag me in the main chat. Okay. Just think that's awesome. Nature. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very afraid that my, my internet or my computer hangs or some shit, and I don't know. Okay, so if anything, if my voice pause for more than like ten seconds, or thirty seconds, just tag me. Okay. Yeah, I, I, are you seeing my screen? Like, am I scrolling the slides? Yeah, well, we are seeing both this card and the slides. Okay, okay. Uh, let's. I just maximize the slides. Okay, that's better. So, yes, nice. Of course, we are on so lady, okay? So, let me see. We just scroll. Okay, disclaimer. This thing. Yeah, disclaimer, just have to say, okay? <laughs> okay, so some pre statistics. What is pre statistics? Show single page. Ah, okay, because. um. There's no time to repeat everything. I have to assume that you, you guys know a bit of, you know, in night assembly. Yeah, yeah, we know a little bit. Yeah, okay. okay. What happened? What happened? Okay, so these two numbers, 0x40 and 0x60, I, I, so this is the free memory pointer, this is the zero pointer. I, I think. If if you don't know, uh, let me know. Okay, then then uh, <coughs> I I know how to go slower. Okay, uh, you know how strings, bytes, and arrays are represented in memory. Yes. If you if you don't know how they are represented in uh, storage, call data is okay. I I sometimes also forget. Then I have to like use remix and debug. <laughs> okay, and you know it's open Zeppelin and soulmate because you need you need to yes. know like what. What are the original implementations? What they do? What they didn't do? Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay. Philosophy about so lady is kind of like a martial art. Like some things, uh, some magic numbers. They serve multiple purpose. Some tricks that I use the custom storage layout has. It's a single move that achieves multiple objectives by attack and defend at the same time. So in solidity, in inline assembly, you have to clean the upper bits of addresses. So you know addresses are 160 bits. The solidity word is 256 bits. All the real words is 256 bits. So the upper 96 bits, if they are dirty, shit will happen. And you have to clean it. So uh, sometimes I will use like advanced tricks to auto-clean the, the upper 96 bits in a single move 
and also store the variable in storage. So you uh, take a lot of inspiration, that's... right? To do those, yeah. you take a lot of inspiration from other languages, right? Yes, I I think uh, C a bit, um, Python a bit. I don't have a fixed language per se. Like I optimize pretty much many things. But now Solidity is the, the, you know, the juicy thing because it's real dollars and cents you can see. Optimize the front end, people just, maybe the slower computers feel faster and that's all. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it's like, um, you know, EVM is very constrained. There's only so many things you can do with all those bytecodes. And sometimes you have to be a bit creative with how you use the bytecode. Yeah. That I will maybe show one or two lines. Okay. Uh, freestyle, sometimes it's in general knowledge. Like some of the, sometimes I come up with weird, uh, weird ideas. I don't know where it come from. It, it, maybe it came from a bit of this and that. Yeah, but you have to know a bit of everything to to combine moves together you know combine combination inspiration from everywhere okay so uh background uh, why i started so lady in july 2022 so there was this uh soulmate that was this open zeppelin open zeppelin is like general library uh, everyone used them um most of the time, they only use 20% of open, open Zeppelin. Like, and Soulmate is like a very minimalist library. Very hard to add things in. So I find that there is a middle ground somewhere. And there's a vacuum in the market. Um, that is good to feel. So I don't want to like put all this crazy assembly into the Open Zeppelin. Because Open Zeppelin is for... Is for right wide audience. It's for readability, modularity. Uh, where soulmate is for minimalism. So it's, I can't find a place to put all this like new stuff. So that's why I create Soul Lady. And there's no meme. I love you. <laughs> this is a me lady meme. Okay. So uh, just run down some of the philosophy on how I write Soul Lady. Uh, in Solidity, you have to balance between two things, one-time guess and bytecode size. Uh, for example, you want to clean the upper bits of addresses. You can mask with a 160-bit number, which is like very big in bytecode size. Or you can do a shift left and then shift right by 96, which is lesser bytecode. Uh. And also, Solidity tries to minimize dependencies. Like you know, MPM projects, node projects, they have like one dependent. They have like thousands of dependencies that have thousands of other dependencies. So, so lady, the only dependency is um, a lot. There is, let me see. There's Foundry. There is uh, maybe DS test which stands for d to something something it's a very uh ancient testing stuff okay i think pretty much that's it um all the libraries are like right independent and third is like we try to make the api as neat as nice to use as possible so inside is all those all those crazy logic but outside it feels Easy to use, like you're using some high level language. You don't need to worry too much. So the idea is uh so lady helps you write lesser assembly in high level logic. So when you write a high level protocol, you don't want to uh, pollute your high level code with all those assembly. If not the your reviewers or auditors will have a harder time reading. So so lady tries to uh wrap up all the uh, like assembly inside a library, then you can just import 
write a few lines and call it a day. If you copy and paste the assembly, uh, your, your project will have a lot of extra code and a lot of build. So yeah, everything try to modularize put in so daily. Okay, so uh, these are all the files. I think there's a new file called libzip. Anyway, the thing is that um, if you do a text find of what files import other files, you find that there is no uh, like every file is very self-contained. So this means that if you have a team of 20 auditors, uh, you can give one file to each auditor and tell them to audit in parallel. It makes things efficient. Every file is independent. Don't we have more uh, files that are more critical for auditing? That files that, you know, like maybe the base64 library or the libzip library, you know, what are the best libraries to start auditing so lately? Okay, uh, I will explain in the next slide. So some of the files, I am a bit more confident because I have uh, used in my work at some XYZ. Um, I asked the viewers to look through them. Uh, some of the files are new. So for a full audit, the three most uh, urgent files are the tokens because tokens have state. Not like libraries, libraries don't have state, so it's easier to fast test, but tokens have state. And if I screw up a, a custom mapping, uh, shit will happen. So I highly feel that tokens should be audited first. And after that, the most important libraries like safe transfer lead, see whether there's any memory uh, memory issues. Hopefully not. Because a lot of people look through it. Uh, ERC1967 factory. Uh, this one hasn't been widely adopted because um, people feel a bit less adventurous. But actually, from a first principles point of view, it is superior to uh, any of the current existing upgradable proxies approach. Uh, there's a signature checker lead, which is related to ECDSA. It's a Merkle proof lead. Actually, these two, I'm pretty confident, but I, I just want to double check because many people use it. It's very critical in many code. IP712 also worth checking out whether it has any bugs. I'm also pretty confident, but just just to be safe, you know. One question, React. <laughs> one question, VX. During your job, during your time working at Sound XYZ, do you just got the time to work on Solid? Did it just gave you some research time, or you did that on your free time? Okay, uh, I, I, let me talk about my boss. So my boss, his name is David Greenstein. And yeah, he's a super nice and very base person. He's a very cool person. So uh, when he hire people, he has this philosophy of hire across the whole world. Don't just hire in LA, SF, or NYC. Although he's in NYC, hires across the whole world. So we have people from Poland, we have people from uh, like me in Singapore, and we have people from Taiwan. He actually wasn't wasn't from Taiwan. He moved to somewhere in Europe. <laughs> yeah. So we have people from all over the world, okay? And have like very diverse team. Higher base of merit, but our team is like very diverse because we are uh, open okay and how we hire is how some xyz hire uh, we look based on the github contributions um, and github contribution means a lot of the people we hire are very prominent open source contributors uh, do so, you usually take parts in the interviews oh uh, they are not hiring smart contract guys right now. Uh, they are hiring maybe I think back and full stack that kind of guys. Yeah. So so the thing about sound is that um, 
you know, you don't need 10 people to write a protocol. You just need one or two guys. Right. You get it? It's like, how, how many ways are you going to rewrite uh, a Merkle proof lead? Yeah, yeah, have... I do get it. <laughs> yeah. At the, at the same time, the, the work that these guys do, are, are kind of challenging, you know, because you guys are doing NFT, it's got to be super optimized. So, you know, getting these guys is not easy. Hiring at the level is not easy. Uh, you uh, just have to write but I guess once, yeah. You need to write, refresh, refresh. If you refresh a code too often, people people will cry. Like blockchain is not meant to be mutable. You can upgrade your contracts, but uh, that is not a very nice pattern, you know. Like upgrading. So although there's upgrade upgrading stuff down here, like one nine six seven factory. Um, if you can make your up. You can make your contracts non upgradable, it's still better. That's my, that's my feel. So, try to consolidate your changes to contracts like once every few months. Make sure your contracts are very properly reviewed. And you have to think a bit, like future proof of contracts a bit. Think about what are the future use cases so that you don't need to change too much. What is the problem with VX? With with the current proc proxy implementation of the diamond standard, because I know you guys are not really in favor of it. You okay, uh, I, I'm not an expert in diamond, <laughs> diamond, so I, I don't want to comment too much. Okay, from, okay. from uh, maybe I give uh, two uh, opinions on diamonds that might not uh, be true for all cases. So, okay, one thing is that diamonds, you know, the storage might overlap. So, auditing. Yeah. It takes more effort. You have to the auditors have to let's say there are 10, 10 facets. So and it can be like the uh, amount of interactions is n squared. So 10 times 10 divided by 2 pairs. So as the amount of facets grow, the amount of interactions grow in terms of n squared. So to make a very thorough audit, it's it's not uh, it does not scale very well, you know. It's quite hard to audit its nature because it's too flexible. Vex, awesome, yeah. awesome. Sorry, sorry for interruption, Vex. Can you can you move your cursor uh, across the screen? I think uh, the slides are freezing. Yeah. Do you see it, guys? Because the guy said like, yeah, it's all good. No, everything's working. Fix connection sometimes like the the sound is like glitching, not only for me but okay. for the other guys. Yeah. So okay. Keep on. okay. Yeah. All good. Uh, keep okay. on, keep on, yeah, keep on, keep on. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, I will tell. I will talk about the one nine six seven factory like in uh five minutes. Okay. Uh. So. Thing. So ladies testing is a bit uh, unique because of how heavy assembly is used. So we do some extra tests like brutalizing the memory, brutalizing the bits. We also test with extra paranoia. We try to make a test as fast at as fast testing as possible, as much fast testing. Because like we don't know what we don't know, you know. Of course, we write unit and H test, but we will write uh, most of it is in fast testing, and we test until we are very sure before we merge merge the PRs. We also like consider the like, adversarial conditions, like what if the free memory pointer is not aligned? Uh, what if the okay, a lot of what if conditions. Um. Parameters, okay, patterns, patterns. So, so they try to be flexible, fast, and everything. Except for easy to read, okay. So, for flexible, how we provide it is that all our contracts are upgradable by default. Uh, but you have to read the next spec, okay. Just read the next spec if you try to use it in upgradable contracts. So, uh, that none of the contracts in SoDady have constructor with arguments because we want off-the-box compatibility with 
clones, upgradable proxies, etc. Uh, we also heavily abuse custom storage layouts. Right? Uh, we craft our own storage layout that uh, somehow abuses the way we store memory uh, in the scratch space to clear the upper 96 bits of addresses. And um, the way we clear upper 96 bits, there's no single fixed ways. Depending on the circumstances, we use different opportunities to do different tricks that is most suited for specific cases. And there is a lot of OCD things in the Soul AD, like uh, our comments, we have to end them with a full stop. Variable names and comments must be enclosed within backticks. Um, okay, all these are just like OCD stuff. Uh, so, so the idea is that if the code feels good, you will naturally make less mistakes. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, there is a lot of things to say about this. So, if you want, uh, I can, you can ask me questions. But anyway, this is oh. just, <laughs> just a lot of convictions, uh, right? So, Kira Kira uh, headers are center left. What is Kira Kira headers, please? Okay, so uh, Soul Lady has a uh, very cute looking headers, a lot of stars, shiny like nice. Okay, so the uh, our text is centered, but let's say if the left has uh, 10 space and the right has uh, 10 space, the text isn't like centered, we will put one space to the right instead of to the left. Yeah, so basically some... Amazing. All, all these small, small comments, like how you align them, we, we, we care the small details even. Can you talk a little bit about don't constrain your thoughts to the limits of the English language? Okay, yeah, this this is a thing I have been thinking about. Like, okay, I've seen uh, Seaport, and Seaport, they have a convention that they try to give every constant English name. I was thinking, like, yeah, I, I kind of get it, but why why should I restrict my thinking to the realms of what English language can express. What if I have a new concept that I can't find an English word to express? So, you know, mathematics. That's why we have mathematical notation, because somehow the English words cannot succinctly express the high-level abstract concepts. And I think that this is quite true of uh, highly logical subjects like programming. So, there are some constants that you just cannot find the words to explain them. You just, you just have to hard code the constant down there, right there. And for people to understand that this is a magic number that people have to be careful because it is something that is original. It, it, there's no English, English words to describe it yet. Amazing, yeah. bro. Okay, then uh, I think this is the last slide. Uh, for memory, we try to play it. F okay, there is this Joe X40 and Joe X60. Uh, we abuse it to store some temporary variables, but we always restore it if we uh, do not direct return from the function. Okay, but never mind. Anyway, um, the point is, although the official documentation says that uh, we are not supposed to right over them. In practice, it's actually safe because the Solidity compiler won't modify these two slots in the middle of an assembly block. Let's say uh, if the Solidity compiler modifies it, it will cause catastrophic uh, damage even to, o even to code with... Uh, okay, so if the compiler somehow breaks this uh, breaks this rule, even if you don't mark it with memory safe, shit will happen. So 
So you by logical deduction, you can deduce that it must be safe. Okay. Um, if an assembly block temporarily use your X eight your and above, we do not mark it as SMB safe. Uh, memory safe. That should be memory. Sorry, Mem memory safe. Um. Okay, this one is just like some aesthetic thing. It's not. It's not for safety. It's more for aesthetic because some front ends, they have issues displaying strings and bytes. Like at the end of the name, they have some weird characters. It's not a safety issue. More like a. Static. More of a convention thing, I understand. Yeah, for making our library friendly towards some front ends. These front ends are like the old Etherscan UI. Now the new Etherscan UI fixed the bug, so it's okay. The old, old Etherscan UI had some bugs with some SMB strings. Awesome, bro. Can you talk a little bit about libzip and how that can make our choose? Three times faster and lighter. Okay, uh, let's see the code right now. Okay, let's jump to the code. I think I zoom in a bit. Um, source. I think it's utilities. I think it's called libzip. Okay. This library is a very powerful library for L2. Um, actually, all these like FLZ, FLZ stands for Fast LZ. It's a LZ77 implementation. Uh, this is more for like compressing and decompressing on-chain SVGs or on-chain bitmaps for those like fancy NFTs that is they like to boast it's on-chain. Yeah, they can use this shit. Okay, but the uh, important part of the library is the core data compress and decompress. Okay. So, so the thing is, I have a contract down here. Contract is very simple. Okay. Uh, okay, here is a deep zip. Uh, ignore it. The contract is. I full screen it. Okay. I zoom in a bit more. Okay. So basically, um, is some storage variables and there are some uh, function I pass in an array of numbers wait, wait, wait. okay uh, so yeah the, the thing is if you call this function cost transaction on optimism or other L2s like Arbitrum is alternate by the size of these numbers. Uh, I, I explain. So there are two transactions. One is the compressed and one is the non-compressed. Okay. Let's look at the non-compressors. Uh, that is cost $3.05. So it calls the call the store number hash and it has all these fancy huge S core data, very big core data. <coughs> and it costs three dollars and five cents. If I use deep zip, see the cost. 63 cents. Wow. Right. I compress oh. the core data. So instead of passing this whole chunk here, it becomes that. What is the because algorithm of, of this compression? Oh, it's uh, it's and this uh, Clevy. Clevy is a, a very awesome important programmer at Optimism. He won the recent If Global Hackathon with the OP compressor. So we discussed how to how to uh, save the core data compressing it so he has this amazing idea that uh is we can use wrong length encoding on the zero bytes because zero bytes are the most common bytes in solidity core data what i mean is like you see all this zero down here and this is yes. zero bytes so i improve upon the algorithm by also compressing the ff bytes 
Because SS bikes are the second most common. Because people always pass in the, like, you have to approve maximum amount of tokens, you pass in FF all the way. So I compress the zero bytes and the FF bytes. So I do the run dank encoding of zero and the FF. So uh, there's also one trick in the CD, wait, CD compress. Wait, is it this? So after I compress, I also flip the first four bytes so that it won't collide with any function selector. And it will, uh, so called uh, function dispatch in the contract will pass the compressed core data to the CD fallback. And it will uncompress, decompress the core data and dedicate core to itself. So uh, this way, uh, let's see the contract again. Okay. Uh, you just need to override these two functions and call a deep zip CD fallback and the contract is instant compatible with compressed core data. You can save uh, you can save some serious money on that. Yeah, amazing stuff, man. I mean, just coming up with this idea sounds quite crazy. The idea that I can compress bytes to make calls cheaper. I mean, this is like looks to me like some sort of evolution of whatever multi call we have today. You know. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I need to show something like L one guess, right? There's the L two guess and the L one guess. Okay. This is what you have to pay attention to. L one guess used by transaction. It's seven k, and I think this is thirty thirty six k. I think with EIP four eight four four, this one would drop drastically. Um. But you know, if everyone has the same, like, cost drop by 10 times or 50 times, um, then people start spamming the network. So the person who have the more optimized code will help the customers, like, save the money. Because if all the gas costs, like, suddenly drop today, then people will start spamming the network. People buy more shit coins, buy more, uh, trade more NFTs, and then the gas price will go up again. So having the more efficient core data or the more efficient contract will make your customers, you know, enjoy the game for longer. Enjoy the game longer. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, bro. <laughs> yeah. I have I have a few questions for people here. The first is. It's already being used in production by some project. Oh yeah. Um, I I think um, most prominently is Sound, uh, Sound X Y Z. I work at. Um, I'm not sure where OpenSea uses it. I haven't checked. I think. Uh, I think Milady Milady uses it, don't it? Yeah, the bonkers, but that is by me, so uh, that's not considered, okay? Okay. Uh, okay, it's production, but uh, I, I'm trying to think of other other people who are not me. Uh, Zero X, Zero X Speeds, I think their upcoming contracts might use our lead clone. Um, there is Optimism Bedrock. I think they might use, I, I don't know, I forgot which part also they did. A small part. Okay. Uh, I, I don't really get your question here, team. Uh, so, team is saying, is saving guys, is having, is saving guys always memory uh, performance? So, so, so let's say I save 2% guys is like increasing 50% in performance. I don't really get the question. If you want to open your mic, team, and talk. Another question that I have is from Atapara, and he's saying, when I write a new Librium Soleili, what is your thought process, you know, to make it as optimized as possible? Oh. <sighs> this is a... Case saving always... 
Okay, I I, as, I answer uh team's question first. Okay, so in in the in the EVM, uh, yeah, memory is being taxed also. So there's this thing called the memory expansion cost. Every extra byte of memory that you first access, you will be charged a certain amount of gas. So that means uh, if your solidity code takes up a lot of memory to run on all those validators. Uh, yeah, you will be charged quite a lot of gas. And this cost, called the memory expansion cost, grows quadratically. So you have to... Um, yeah, gas saving is always like... Uh, it's kind of proportional to how well... Or algorithm runs on the validators. Okay. Um, I answer Atapara's question. Um, what is my thought process? Okay. Um, there is this PDF called Advice to a Young Mathematician. So the idea is that sometimes you have the, you have the gut feel that if you go in a certain direction, um, you can find some improvements. So sometimes you have to um, train your gut feel. Your gut feel is not like 100% correct. You, you need to like know when you can trust it, when you cannot. So sometimes when I write an algorithm and it just looks wrong to me, I know that there's some part that can be optimized. Yeah. I will just try my best to hunt for the hunt for where I can optimize it. The algorithm like looks correct to looks optimized to me, then I know I'm more or less at the point of diminishing returns. I gave. Okay, actually, um I, I do think that if you deploy on L2s, most of the gas problems can be solved. Uh, and L2s will become like much more scalable when this AIP4844 hits the market. Right now, core data costs uh, four, 4 gray per zero byte and I think 16 gray per non-zero byte. I think next time it'll be, some people say it's like 50 times cheaper. So, it will be like much more scalable next time. L two will be much cheaper. Like instead of paying sixty cents, you might pay three cents. So I think the uh, incentive to use L two will grow up as time goes by. It becomes so cheap that you you feel there is no reason not to use it. Right now, at sixty cents per transaction, it's cheap but not cheap enough actually. Nice, really nice, bro. Um, more questions from the crowd? Oh, anyone want to open their mic and make a question to VX? Let, let me see whether... Okay, I, I tell you about the ERC, this, this thing. What is this? Okay. Uh, what is this? Is the address? There are only two people using it right now because uh people don't trust the product yet. <laughs> um, we have really like tried our best to make sure that it's correct, but um, that's how it is. So trust is a issue. Okay. So anyway, um, the the thing is that uh, let's say I deploy a contract, say. I deployed some contract down here. This is an upgradable con contract. Uh, uh, it creates a contract. So the thing is that um, the read as proxy and there's a write as proxy. So uh, what 
the scan doesn't support right now is it was people will just see this byte code down here, then they will get a bit scared. But whereas uh but byte code you can actually trace it back to the factory and make sure that it's verified. You can like click here then see the factory and verify that this byte code is indeed safe. So um thing about this upgradable proxy approach is that you don't need to verify your contracts because uh obviously this byte code is no way to verify it other than ask Etherscan to support it by hiding this code, hiding this tab. Etherscan won't uh will most likely not entertain yeah they, they are pretty slow to do things. So and the second thing is that uh every time you deploy a transparent transparent upgradable proxy you have to deploy like two extra contracts then you have to verify two extra contracts. So where's this you just have to use the factory deploy and that's it. Yeah, you don't need to verify your extra contracts. Yeah. Um, and let's say, okay, let's talk about the DeepZ. So, so daily, if you are using DeepZ, uh, we also provide a library called the so daily JS. I, I intentionally didn't use TypeScript because I want everyone to easily use it anywhere without installing all those tooling. So you can call the compress in the front end, in the back end, wherever. If as long as there's JavaScript, then you can pass it to the contract. So we try to make everything as easy as possible for users. It's really cool, bro. How long would be the audit? One week, two weeks, one month? You have any ideas? What other? Yeah, I, I do think that um, getting an audit is quite important to establish trust because like <laughs> it's like users also have to answer to their devs have to answer to their users. Let's say if something gets hacked, then people start pointing fingers. Why isn't this auditor? Why isn't that auditor? Yeah, that kind of shit and drama will come up. Um, okay. What are the advantages and disadvantages of? That's really cool. Okay, I mean. uh, it, so okay, so so that is designed in a way that you can just copy and paste the code into your code base. Uh, but then you have to consider. Let's say if your code base has a CI that does something like code coverage, um, and the amount of code you copy will screw up your code coverage scores. Okay. Uh, for so lady, we don't do code coverage because, like, obviously you can't like tap, you can't cover handwritten by code, and there are some assembly that is totally not suitable for code coverage. So yeah. Uh, but the thing is that if you import like so lady versus copying to your code base, it can can uh help improve your CI compile times, your code meter. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? I think this is it, VX. Uh, I wanted to thank you so much for coming up today. You know, and giving your time again. Uh, you know, you came here five, three months ago or something. We did the interview, and thank you so much, bro. Uh, you know, I have one last okay, question. Thank you so someone. much. Yeah. Oh, single variable instruct a struct. Okay, I, I, I explain, I explain. Um, let me go to a new window. Okay, okay. I, I think I, I have an example that can, that can demonstrate. Okay, so in this, there's a... a contract called uh... ah so this is a struct that has a single value um so the thing is that 
you use a struct with a single value, you can show you where is it using. But you can do uh you can do something like that. Like something something storage from the mapping. Then if you do some other stuff um, you don't need to recalculate the slot. And also, you can uh, directly uh, get the storage slot in assembly without doing all those keycard 256 shit. Yeah. Sometimes uh, this pattern makes it easier to use uh, the value, handle the mapping values. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Cool, bro. I think this is it, VX. Uh, anything you want to say? Any closing thoughts? Let me see. Yeah, I, I really hope that um, everything will uh, be good for the audit. Awesome, I'm bro. keeping my fingers crossed. I also like would like to thank all of you for your support and your immense like support, your love and your time. Yeah, bro, thank we're you. gonna do, thank you so much, yeah. man. And we're also gonna do the audit here, so we can compare in the end just to see how much of we got wrong and right. Okay, thank you so uh, much. Bro. Just, just uh, one thing. Don't, don't be too hard. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. What, one thing before we go. Uh, what do you think we should do to get ready for the audit? How can we help you as much? Like, how can we be helpful? Oh. Um, you have some advice right now, um, oh my god I'm sorry man oh. it, it seems so, like uh, uh, no 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 so, so okay because so lady is like every, every part of code every part of so lady is written in uh, slightly different ways um, it's, it's no one fixed rule to audit everything um, okay okay if some functions that are too complicated to understand line by line. So, for those functions, I will like check whether the fast test is enough. No. Awesome! Awesome! Sounds okay, like, bro. Like, you know, there are like some stuff like uh, the math functions. Like, okay, I show you one example. Um, I show you. I show you one example. Uh, source. Um, where is it? Queues. Um, is it here? Six point math. Okay. So, for example, this function. If I don't understand any of the math behind it, I will just have to look at at the fast test to make sure that the fast test makes sense. Then fast test as much as possible. <laughs> awesome. Makes me happy that you okay. know nothing about it. Okay. Makes me more hopeful. Uh, sometimes I don't know everything also like I understand. Where, where, where we does this our... number come from? <laughs> Rex, Rex, we will do our best to, to be helpful as much. Yeah, we're we gonna can. yeah we're gonna have you know we're gonna have a training session with Jake Trilly before and then we, he's gonna give us the UPU and then we're gonna prepare probably to start this weekend on this audit you know I want I want to do something live that will be on camera you know that's fun we're doing groups I think one week should give us something you know if we like like VX did we split the code base between teams and then we can exchange files and everything okay uh -huh. thank you so much vectorized. Okay. You're a fucking king. Whenever you need so to much. come here, uh, just come, okay? Thank you so this much. This is your brother. family. This is your family. Thank you. Come whenever you want. Yeah. Bye-bye, brothers. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.